We are going to be continuing on our study in the Gospel of Matthew. We find ourselves in Matthew chapter 18, and we will be reading verse 26. Now, when you look at parables, understand that what parables were, first and foremost, was a way to bring forth theological truth in a way that the average person of Jesus' day could grasp. And clearly the power of parables, even to this day, is their ability to resonate with us. Now, some of the parables obviously have some parts of it which are dated in terms of cultural reference. But the amazing thing is par of parables is their ability to still resonate today. We can readily understand what Jesus is trying to say through a parable and therefore are able to grasp, in some cases, very complex and deep theological truth. Reading from the Beck translation, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 26 says this. Then the slave got down on his knees and no man bowing low before him begged, Be patient with me and I will pay you everything. When you turn back to the previous reading and read this verse in light of what was said there, what conclusions do we come to? Now, we kind of labored the point that when you looked at the person's debt, it was astronomical. And what we made the point was that Jesus was using hyperbole. A talent was the largest currency unit. 10,000 was the largest number unit. So it was this immense infinitesimal size debt beyond any sort of reality. So was this man sincere in saying that he would repay the debt he owed? Well, the answer has to be no. Was he being realistic in saying he could repay the debt? Well, no. Did he really believe he could repay the debt? And the answer has to be no again. If we approach this as a man pleading to do the possible, then we have missed the point. The whole point of this parable is a case in which you have a person with something that in no way can be solved or resolved by his own effort. The man knew what he needed to do. He knew what he had to say. He knew that there was no way he could repay the debt. We are left with the famous, well, hand caught in the cookie jar syndrome. In the hand in the cookie jar scenario, we are talking of a mother catching their child, standing on our chair, arm stretched out to the appropriate shelf, and a hand in the cookie jar. Now, I understand that most people nowadays probably don't have cookie jars. So if we were to modernize it, we would say it is a mother walking into the kitchen and seeing her young toddler with two Oreos in hand. And that child is trying to sneak out of the kitchen without his mother being aware. What can the person do at that point? You cannot deny the reality. The Oreo cookies are there. You cannot get away with saying, I was taking stock of inventory. Opening the cookie jar lid and seeing how many are there. Or checking the box of Oreos to see how much there. No, you are caught with the goods in hand. You cannot really do anything but plead. For mercy. There is no other option. In this parable, this man would not have been where he was financially because of an economic downturn. You know, we use that euphemism a lot in our news, right? An economic downturn. No, it wasn't that. He was not in this situation because he was waiting for his bonds to mature. He was not there because he, he had you know, whatever going on, waiting for a paycheck. He was there because he lived a life in flagrant, flagrant disregard of sound financial actions. In modern terms, he was a swindle and a cheat. And in a sense, that is not said in the parable, but that seems to be very much implied. The type of debt that this person had was flagrant disregard. It was not 
because of some economic downturn. He, this man, had cookie crumbs all over his face. In this type of scenario, what could the person do but plead for mercy? Now, notice that the only option he had was to plead for mercy. If you have a person who knows that the only option is to plead for mercy, then you cannot help but wonder about the person's sincerity. In this parable, that is not discussed, and in a sense, that is reading into the parable something that is not there. But I think we can see that it is hard to see this as somebody who is sincere, but rather this is someone who is forced to take the drastic, drastic action of pleading for mercy. To understand the Christian faith is to understand the hopelessness of the human condition. In the modern Western world, we want to see humanity as innately good, with boundless limits to our potential. The cross is anathema to this idea. We are actually sinners in need of atonement. The problem is that we can look at our debt like this man. We cry out for mercy, and when it is given to us, then go back to the life we were living. It is not enough to recognize how great our debt is. It is not enough to beg for mercy. What we have to do is live in light of that mercy and be ambassadors of that mercy in a world that is often petty, selfish, and vindictive. 